Reports that a license has been granted to a company to import Canadian cannabis into Jamaica has provoked the ire of many ganja farmers. And I think the society in general, not just the farmers. <laughs> Here now to discuss the possible implications for our local industry is a director for the Center of Entrepreneurship Thinking and Practice at the UWI, Dr. Kadawami Knife. Morning. Yes, it's Always a day. pleasure to have you on Smell Jim. <laughs> morning. Good to see you. Yeah, well, give thanks. Um, I was listening to uh, the minister, Mr. Hill, and apparently he said there's a trade agreement between Canada and Jamaica. Yeah. So what the Canadians did, they didn't do anything wrong to send weed here. Mm -hmm. He also said, because people are saying, oh, come, we're not exporting. And he said, that deal is also on, but we're not using it. And he said only nine times it happened before 2020. Yeah. I say that to say this. Do you have an issue with Canada um, sending weed to Jamaica? Think, uh, Jamaica has always been involved in trade agreements with different places, you know? I mean, we have NAFTA, a number of those other trade agreements that are supposed to support inter-regional trade, which is good. And of course, that includes agriculture. Ganja is also a part of agriculture, just like banana and apple mm -hmm. and mango, etc. Mm -hmm. So if there is a need for an imported input, an imported input, in this case, ganja, then it can always import. The question is though, why is it that there is a need for that import? Well, in truth, and in fact, Jamaica can produce ganja better than anybody else. One of the advantages we have that we have 10 hours of sunlight. And because we have 10 hours of sunlight, we can plant ganja as much as we want. Places like Canada are to be doing those things indoors. So naturally, we would have some kind of advantage over those places to produce. Mm -hmm. So why are we not producing? I think that is the bigger question. This thing about whether the herb is coming from Canada or not is a distraction from the real problem, is, which is the challenge that people are actually facing locally in meeting what the requirements are to be engaged in ganja production generally. Mm -hmm. So that is where the problem is. And though I will not get caught in the debate about whether um, it coming from Canada, it comes from the United States, or it comes from South Africa. Why Jamaica, who can do this thing? I've been doing it, and is doing it. Because remember, now we're still producing ganja now, but mm -hmm. we're producing ganja and exporting it illegally. Yeah. So, the, so the, the minister must be clear what he's saying. Jamaica consistently export ganja, but illegally. We would have a framework where we can export ganja legally, which accommodates the farmers. So what are those challenges, um, Dr. Neff? That's what I'm curious to find out. Because we've been, listen, Jamaica led the advocacy for ganja yes. worldwide. Uh, yes. know, and then the world catch on now and run gone leave way. Yeah. <laughs> Why? No, regulations. You know, in entrepreneurship, we argue that an overregulated state or sector, it stifles entrepreneurship. It stifles entrepreneurship. Now, in this case, the regulations come through the CLA, which I think the CLA is actually being used as a scapegoat. Because the CLA is not designed to build out an industry, you know, it's to regulate. Mm -hmm. You need to look at the entities that are supposed to be building out the industry, which is now, that now speaks to the ministries with certain kind of responsibility, whether it be the Ministry of Investment, Industry and Commerce, Industry, Investment and Commerce, mm -hmm. or the Ministry of Agriculture. So note, what I've been hearing about ganja from the Ministry of Agriculture, I've not heard anything about ganja from the Ministry of Agriculture. When we talk about the Ministry of Industry, Investment and Commerce, that minister keeps saying that we need to increase export, increase export, increase exports. But yet still they don't resource the institutions that are supposed to support people who are going to increase Ex the exports. Now, let me give you a, a classic case. And I was thinking about ganja. Look at the MSME sector generally. Because the small ganja farmers could be considered a part of the micro, small and medium enterprise sector, yes? Mm -hmm. What support is really offered? to those persons. I mean, we, we allocate $1 billion to DBJ to support MSMEs, but we were thinking about building a prison for $30 billion. Yes? The agriculture sector itself requires only about $4 billion to turn it around. We don't do that, but we are planning to build a prison for $30 billion. How do you get the small farmers involved? I mean, I hear you, so yes. they need resources. Exactly. But if I have a little farm and I can produce, you know. <laughs> no, this is a regulation that comes in now because they are saying it is medical marijuana. They have implemented a number of regulations to ensure quality control. But there's a price. So it's not the, the, the regulation, which is the heart of the problem, is the price for meeting the regulation. So you have to put up a million. Exactly, but a big cost. Yes? And so for me, I can pay the same 10,000 US dollars that I pay to get involved in ganja, to pay somebody to put the ganja in a plane to get it to the next country. As a matter of fact, I can actually pay less. 
So the pricing, and why is it that the sale have to be charging these prices? Again, it goes back to the fact that, you know, give the CLA the kind of budget that it requires to run their own operation. So what you have done is to transfer the CLA and other institutions into hustling institutions because they are now charging fees to generate funding to cover a number of expenses. No, there was a solution though. Because Jamaica not really short of the money, contrary to what people want to say. Look at a TEF, the Tourism Enhancement Fund. Ganja, we know, is at the heart of a number of things that actually attracts tourists to Jamaica. Yes? Whether it be Rastafari, the reggae music, all those things. The TF are the funding. Why is that they don't make the TF support the CLA in terms of your operations? The CLA can now reduce some of those fees that are attached. And they will argue, you know, that okay, you know, some farmers can pay half of the fee. Mm -hmm. What is the moment? What does half of the fee mean? Half of the fee is 5,000 US dollars. How much persons have 5,000 US dollars to pay for any form of license? When we were pushing tourism, and this is just basic economics. While ganja is a historical, is a well-defined illegal industry in Jamaica, the legal part is an infant. And so in economics, there's something that's called an infant industry argument, whereby because it's an infant, it's supposed to put in place structures to nurture that until it becomes an adult where it can sustain itself. For tourism, you know, what we did in the Caribbean and in Jamaica was to create a tourism act and the Tourism Act allowed persons who are investors in tourism to take in things to the country without even paying duties and some of those things. It's just recently we had changed that. So why would we not do that for the ganja industry and other industries that we are trying to develop? But is, what I'm hearing, is that the problem that, that we have not moved mentally in, <laughs> to accepting ganja as an industry? It, it sounds to me right, like me still as a ganja as... No, let, let me tell you thing, man. Yeah. Some of these guys in the ministry think that ganja was going to be them called this green gold and they want to control it. Okay. So it's not about not accepting it. Okay. They will never accept ganja because I'm still have a vibe with it. But it's a money making thing. Right. And they thought now that we could have made a bag of money off of this industry and we are going to get all these people from overseas, not even local people, you know. Mm. And I mean, when they say overseas, they're not even targeting our diaspora people, you know. It's the same foreign direct investment right. strategy that we have been using. For everything. But exactly. And we know that when we have foreign direct investment. Virgin, you see this thing, man, about industrialization by invitation. What it does with FDI is that so the leakages are significantly high. Significantly high. So even if you have people coming into Jamaica to invest, the money would not stay unless you had put in place a system that says, okay, let's talk about this called a local partnership agreement, whereby when we invite a foreign direct investor, they have to partner with the local community and have a kind of sharing. Yeah. Yes, that's what cause retention for we, we soon run out of time. Let me change lanes a bit. Speak to the local small farmer. Yes. Tell him or her what they can do to be a part of this. Well, Prof, you ask me a question which is difficult to answer. Because there's not much a local farmer can do because the, 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 the regulator framework is, is what determines what happens. And so unless we really address the regulator framework, we're going to have a problem. What I do know, though, is that you're going to have more people just turn them back on the industry and just focus on exporting ganja illegally. Illegally. Now I tell you, that's what happen. And you know, and people don't recognize the implications because Jamaica being positioned as a logistic hub, which means that we're going to have these thousands upon thousands of ships and more planes coming to Jamaica, which we cannot even monitor currently. It is going to be easier for me as an individual to do that. Yes? And what it means then, we're going to lose out. We're going to lose out, meaning that the state itself is going to lose out because once we start to do that, Export mm -hmm. and then comes the record to us as farmers. There's no way the state can get any revenue because we're not going to pay any tax, right? You know, so it's sometimes it's just a penny wise oh. and pound foolish. But the way the people will end up in a jail to steal. I, I put you know what, I know if I end up in jail because they're not doing it in a jail anyway. We don't have to see what strategy they're going to develop to put those people in jail. I remember that this is that trade, you know, the illegal ganja trade is a very organized system. It's not a disorganized system. Remember, that is why Jamaica become popular, you know, for ganja, you know. It is the illegal ganja trade that boosts the popularity of Jamaican ganja globally. Because if you were doing it illegally, it would not reach some of those places. Yeah, true, true. Good to see you, my brother. Yeah, my brother. Give thanks. Thanks yep. for coming. Morning, Ross Podler. Um, he's the Director, Centre of Entrepreneurship, Thinking and Practice at UA, Dr. Karamawi Knife. Never hear her. I've been telling the story. <laughs> so, <laughs> well, there was this picture on the front page of a newspaper I'm with Ross Podler with a big chill on <laughs>
<laughs> and dealer say, last time I checked, it was illegal. When the black up respond, the next day. <laughs> <laughs> All, All right, right, folks, going to move along. Up next, we'll be taking a walk along the road to reparations. Kind of not necessarily um, a different thing that we are talking about here, yeah. truth yeah. be told. You Soon know, come. The university has just done a research. Like you know. royalty, royalty. Hey.